All the video games that you are seeing on the screen right now are all created using AI. Today we're going to take a look at the best of these AI coded video games and I am also going to show you how to create video games like these for yourself using AI. So first we have this game which was created by Luke Van In and he said that he vibe coded this 3JS game with AI generated characters in eight hours. Then he says that he manually rewrote the code produced by an AI and it took him around eight days. Anyway, let's now look at how good the game is. This seems to be a third person fighting style game. I think that the goal of the player is to escape from this monster. What I really like about this game is the 3D like textures that are on the wall, which give it a realistic vibe. The running animation of the monster and the character is also really good, but I really don't seem to understand how this guy got such detailed 3D models. I have vibe coded some AI games myself, but I can't really seem to get this level of detail using my 3D models that were generated by AI. The 3D models are really cool. I'll need to look into how these 3D models are generated using AI. The lighting of the game also looks really cool. Now let's see a simulation. So this is the simulation that we are going to look at, and it was created by Puneet slash tech artist. Although in this description, he did not specifically mention that he created this code using AI. Looking at his Twitter account, he has posted many cool simulations and vibe coded games created using AI. So I am assuming that this was also created with the help of AI. So this is basically an abstract simulation of geometric structures, if I have to put it really simply. He says that we can try it in the source code. I'm going to click on it. I'm also going to link all these games and simulations that I find from Twitter in the description. So after watching this video, you can try these out for yourself. In this simulation, if I right click my mouse, I can control the rotation of the camera and using the scroll wheel, I can either zoom in or zoom out, which is really cool. Watching this simulation is really cool. It is kind of making me feel dizzy. The geometric structure is going to change its shape after a certain amount of time and you can increase it using this control. What happens if I change the pulse speed? Oh, so it just becomes more square-like. Let's increase the radius. I think that by increasing the radius, I have broken this shape. And let's see, what happens if we increase the threshold? I think that by increasing the threshold, I am changing how the simulated light emits from the simulated geometric object. This is a really cool feature. What is this energy burst? Let's click it. After clicking the energy burst, the geometric objects burst beams of light from all sides. This is freaking magnificent. And we can also change the color scheme. I really like how we can do that. This makes me feel like I am doing something insanely iconic. Oh, and you can actually go inside the object. Just look how the geometric object looks from inside. It is really something insane. I think I can stare at the screen forever. This is really sick and cool. Next up, we are going to take a look at this game engine that was created by Chris Tate using AI. Someone literally built a complete game engine with which you can actually create games. It is really insane if you think about it, that AI has gone from creating dumb games to creating engines that build games, which is amazing. It really goes to show the exponential growth that the AI industry is facing right now. If you are not using AI, then you are seriously missing out. This is a basic game engine where you can create different types of shapes like cubes and rectangles in 3D, of course, and you can rotate objects. I think that this game engine for now is only good for creating maps and objects. It is a really simple game engine. It is not like it is going to replace Unity or Unreal Engine 5 soon, but it is really cool to see how AI has gone from creating snake games to creating actual game engines within like six months. If the growth rate of AI continues like this, then I think that in two to three years, we are going to be able to create AAA games by giving AI just two to three prompts. Anyway, now let's look at this game. This is like a Candy Crush type of game, but it is way better looking and has a way better vibe than Candy Crush. I really like the animations of the objects and the physics simulation in these 2D objects. I think that the goal of the game is to score as many points as one can within a given amount of time, which is a good game idea because you can pitch people against each other in a competition to get as many points as they can within a certain amount of time, and the person with the most points wins, which could really work. This is another 2D game that was given a 3D kind of vibe. Blockbuster is a puzzle game. The person who vibe coded this created it in just a few hours using Claude 3.7 Sonnet and O1 Pro of ChatGPT. For a few hours of work, this game looks really cool. The goal of the game is to place these objects in a way that they fill a line in the area of the game. Once they fill a complete line, that area vanishes and the user gets a point. It is an infinite game, so you can play it forever and it becomes progressively harder as you play and score points. 
This game is really slick looking. Now let's take an example of a stupid looking game that someone has created. This game is not actually that bad, but you can see how this game compares to other vibe coded games. Just take this game as an example, and this game. You can see they are both created using AI, but one is way better than the other. I'm not saying anything bad about the person who created this game. I'm just saying that there is still a learning curve to create games using AI. You cannot just go and create the best vibe coded games like these for your first project. You need to learn how to actually code with AI. Before teaching you how to make these types of video games, I want to just show you this feature of the new AI model of OpenAI, O3. And I have mixed feelings about this feature of O3. So this feature is that you can upload any photo and it is going to correctly guess the location of that photo. And everybody seems to be just cool with it, like it is just another cool feature of the full O3 model of OpenAI. And I am stunned that almost nobody on the internet is f***ing scared. I mean, you can f***ing upload a photo and O3 is going to tell you the location. It is absolutely insane that anyone can take a screenshot of a photo from the internet and get the location of that photo. And it does not take a genius to figure out how bad this feature is. It is not a cool feature of OpenAI. I think that it should absolutely be removed from O3 or turned off because if you go into anywhere like Discord, Instagram or Twitter, you will see how many weirdos and creeps are on the internet and giving someone the power to get the location of a place just by giving a photo to O3 Mini does not really sound good to me. It is going to freaking destroy the privacy of most influencers. One or two wrong photos uploaded to the internet and your location is completely exposed to the whole freaking world. So just be careful if you are uploading images to social media. Anyway, now I'm going to show you how to actually create these games for yourself. To create these, you can use two apps, Cursor and Windsurf. Windsurf and Cursor are both great apps to use these models in agentic mode. But today I'm just going to use Cursor to create this a game. You can download Cursor by going to their official website and download Cursor by clicking here and then create new folder like this and open Cursor. And to open the project, you just need to click on the name of the folder you have created. Now you have this thing and here you can use many AI models. Cursor is not an AI model. It is just a platform where you can use many of these AI models in agentic mode, which makes it way easier and better to create video games with them. For this demonstration, I'm going to use Claude 3.7 Sonnet because it is comparatively cheap and really good for that price tag. And the best thing is that if you don't know how to create a game or which coding language to use, then you can just ask the AI model. Let's say I want to create a snake IO type of game. So first you need to write your idea now you can choose between how you want to run this game, like do you want to run it on a native device or on the web. For now I'm just going to ask it that I want the game to run on the web. Which coding language should I use and why? Now this is a really good prompt because you are learning by means of creating. When you are coding a game you will face many problems, like the AI making mistakes. And to make good things with AI you certainly have to now be at least a beginner level coder. You can learn coding from YouTube and you can also learn the basics by asking the AI models and creating games using AI. So I'm just going to run this command and see what happens. It says that for a snake IO type of game that runs on the web, JavaScript with HTML is best and it specifies the reasons. Now if you wanted to create a game that could run using Python or any other coding language natively on the device, then you can ask it. But for demonstration purposes, as it is much easier to create games on the web, so I'm going to continue with this. Now I'm going to ask it to create a structure of this game. If you are creating a game that is unique, then you need to give the structure of the game to the AI model. But Snake.io type of games are not really that unique. So I'm just going to ask it to create the structure of the game and then create the game. This is the game that was created. So basically this is just the structure of the Snake IO game and I am not actually creating a Snake IO game. I am creating a 2D circle shooter, but for the structure of the game, it is really good to use the structure of another popular game so that the AI does not get confused and is unable to create even the basics of the game. That's why I asked it to create a Snake IO type of game. Now I'm going to ask it to create the real game that I wanted to create which is a 2D circle shooter with enemy AI and an expandable map. You, it has finished creating, so I'm just going to refresh the page and already it looks really beautiful. You can see the beautiful landing page. But some changes need to be made to the game. Are these red dot enemies or not? How do I shoot? Oh, by clicking the space button you can shoot. For now the speed of the player is absolutely insane and the game is not working properly. I'm just going to ask it to make these changes, which are that the, the player should be able to control the movement of the arrow using the mouse. 
the arrow should be differentiated from the circle. Make the arrow and the circle look beautiful. Optimize the speed of the player. The speed is high, so make it optimized. Also, add health bars to the player and the enemies. Make the background of the map of the game really beautiful. I'm going to give this prompt to basically make the background and gameplay more optimized and beautiful. So this is now the game. I can control the arrow on the circle of the player. Just look at how cool the animation is right now. The animation of the bullets is insanely cool. I really love this game and you can see there is even collision detection. The background of the game is also really cool. Just look at this. I can just sit here and kill these stupid little enemies. There is even an explosion death animation for the enemies. So as you can see, when you use these AI models in an agentic format, these AI models are really cool. I have successfully created a prototype of a game. But if I wanted to make this game into even a playable game, I would need to add many different game modes and many different features. I would also need to improve the map of the game a lot and improve the enemy AI a lot. I would need to add multiplayer, better collision detection, and many other things. Especially, I would need to create player authentication, back-end servers, and I would also need to connect the code of the game with GitHub to save the progress so that the AI does not ruin the game if it makes a mistake. Anyway, go build your imagination using AI, because your ideas are bigger than any AI tool. And remember that this is just the beginning.